All right. Hello, and welcome back to the Thought Cloud podcast. Our goal with this conversation is to uncover a hidden gem that can inspire others along their academic journey. Our guest today is Fallon Chang. Fallon is a senior at Columbia University studying neuroscience and behavior with a concentration in public health. Fallon is currently the external affairs chair and Saturday science chair for Columbia Neuroscience Society, which is an interdisciplinary community of undergraduates who are interested in exploring the frontiers of neuroscience at Columbia University. So we're gonna dig into Fallon's academic path here, what she's done with CNS and what she hopes to do in the future. So Fallon, thank you so much for coming on. I'm super excited to dig into it with you and uh, take it away, say a couple of words. Yeah, thanks for having me here. And I'm excited to share whatever I can. 100%. So let's start with Columbia University. You decided to study there obviously a couple of years back, but what were the driving forces there? Why did you say Columbia is a school for me? Um, I think the main inspiration for me when I was applying to college for even applying to Columbia was my creative writing director in high school. Um, I went to an arts high school in California where I studied creative writing and my creative writing director who was a really, really good mentor to me told me that he thought that Columbia would be a really good place for me to study writing and to explore about myself. So it was kind of with that guidance from him that I even decided to apply to Columbia. I originally had absolutely no aspirations to. Um, and then when I was accepted, something that was really instrumental in me deciding to go here was suddenly realizing during the senior year of my high school that I had other interests or wanted to explore other things. And a lot of the other places that had accepted me or that I had applied to, um, I had applied to more binding programs, like applying to journalism school specifically, or um, like music programs or whatever. And I really wanted to have the chance to explore. And during the time when I had applied, I was like an English major. So I knew Columbia had a strong English major program. But if I wanted to explore outside of English, I would have a chance to do so. And especially being in New York City, like everyone talks about the amount of opportunities. And that's definitely something I've experienced here and that I'm grateful for. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, let's back it up to the creative writing aspect. So you started with this idea, okay, creative writing, I want to go into English. Talk to us about that mindset. Like what was, what was it like being a, a great creative writer in high school? I mean, so much so that your counselor said, hey, go to Columbia for it. Like what, what kind of activities did you do or how did you engage in that atmosphere? Yeah, um, I think something that I'm really thankful for about studying creative writing was experience exposed me to a lot of different communities and different stories and different issues. So I interviewed like a bunch of students from different backgrounds, wrote about their experiences with chronic illness, being low income and queer and dance. Um, I wrote about um, people's struggles with autism and navigating the education system through that. I was also able to cover a gubernatorial forum in California where I realized that politics was not really for me because I felt like they were not answering any questions, they were just going around them. And all of these experiences gave me a lot of perspective, I think. And I was really involved on campus. I did like the newspaper. I also did multimedia journalism where we created a documentary um, following drag queens in LA. And I don't know, I just learned a lot. And I think the perspective that that gave me as well as some personal life experiences and other things um, really gave me a lot of soft skills to sort of be flexible to transition to whatever I wanted and also gave my teacher maybe the idea that I could also have room to explore even outside of writing. Definitely, definitely. So you really took that initiative in your high school time to dig into this idea of creative writing, um, you know, just some of the experience you named like the gubernatorial conference, um, obviously doing a complete, uh, I, I, did you say that you shot, a, did you do a documentary? Is that what you said? Yeah, we made like a short documentary on drag queens in LA. That's yeah. So I mean, just the the level of commitment to that field is it's impressive. So you got to Columbia, or you chose Columbia because you said maybe there's more I want to explore, and you got there. And did you know about neuroscience and behavior at that point? Not really. It was kind of on my radar because people were like oh, neuroscience is super interdisciplinary. And something that my creative writing director had told me was, if you're interested in writing other genres, it's good to study other genres. So I was looking into maybe psychology at that point to better understand like the psychology of characters or the psychology of people in general, or maybe even sociology. And then I kind of bounced around and happened to land in neuroscience after um, this 
lecture that we had in one of our core classes called Frontiers of Science, where we had this really, really cool lecture. I think she advised like the people for Inside Out or something, but she gave this really cool talk where she talked about a few experiments and things. And I was like, oh, this is really fascinating. And at the time, I also had a couple of mates who were studying neuroscience and they were like, yeah, neuroscience is super cool, go for it. So they were like <laughs> some of the reasons why I ended up studying neuroscience, I think. That, what, were, what was that little spark that you said? Some of those experiments during that lecture, like give us an example, maybe one that really stood out to you that says, wow, this is something I want to explore more. This is funny that you asked because I don't remember now <laughs> exactly <laughs> what the experiment was other than I was fascinated by just how much even working with mice can like tell us about the human brain, even though they're yeah. so different and how it's a combination of observing behavior, but also understanding like the neural mechanisms and the biology behind it. And I know like psychology would have been a little bit less satisfying to me because it would be more observations of behavior alone rather than understanding like the biology of it and coming to that realization I think was what made me choose neuroscience over psychology. Definitely and you're keeping that behavior aspect in there is that a joint major or are those two different majors behavior and neuroscience? It's just um the, what's the major what the major is called so it's just called neuroscience and behavior cool. and it's like yeah. Yeah very neat very neat so then so far when, when you made that decision were you a freshman to jump into that? Kind of. I, I was started thinking about it my freshman spring. Okay. And then during our sophomore year where we had to declare our majors officially, I had this huge identity crisis where <laughs> I was like, who am I? What am I doing? Uh, where do I want to go? You know, those big existential angsty questions that we all get at that age. Um, yeah. Definitely. So around that sophomore time is when it sort of became, okay, the path I'm taking. And what have you been able to do with it since? Like, what are some projects or some things that you've engaged with that have opened your eyes to it even more? Um, I think the first step for me at that point was trying to get involved with research on campus. And it was really, really difficult for me because I didn't have science bench research experience from high school. Um, and then during my sophomore year, we were online entirely. Right. So originally I was going to work with a lab to study I think memory and poetry or whatever. And then it didn't work out because of the pandemic and they no longer needed someone who wasn't in New York. And then afterwards I applied for a new lab that was moving from UPenn, I believe. And it was someone from the Neuroscience Society actually who was like, hey, check out this lab, they're new. I think you'd, be, you'd enjoy it. And I was really, really lucky. The PI was really into mentorship and even though I was super honest, I was like, hey, I don't have any research experience. I'm not sure how much it can help. He was very kind and he saw sort of my curiosity as something that was worthwhile. And the mentorship in the lab that I am in now studies somatosensation in naked mole rats. And I'm learning a lot. Like there's still a lot obviously for me to learn, but everyone there is so kind and they've taken so much patients in mentoring me and making me feel like I belong in science, even though I didn't initially start out in science. Definitely. So two questions that I have. One is about the actual experiment, but one is about getting into it. Um, I want to touch on the getting into it first. You said it was your curiosity that you thought he saw that said, okay, I'm going to take a chance on bringing you on, bringing this girl on and um, you know, introducing her to the team, giving, giving her this opportunity. What would you suggest to students that haven't had that experience that are looking to get involved in research? You know, I, I think you can speak really well to that. Yeah, um, I think something that I usually tell people is like, obviously it's a numbers game, like the whole reach out a lot part, but I think it's also very important to demonstrate that you have interest and that you have questions. I think a misconception that I had about science starting off was that people valued answers, but I think people value questions just as much. And mm -hmm. if you bring good questions to the lab or to any space that you're in, it'll very, very much add something to both your experience and other people's experience, I think. Um, and just being able to admit that you have questions and sort of even be proud of the questions that you could bring is valuable, I think. Because I think in the email where I wrote to the PI, the very first one, I wrote him a list of questions that I was interested in. Um, and they were only tangentially related to his lab at the time because, you know, <laughs> I think I go off on tangents a lot in my questions, but he took <laughs> it as a sign that I was, I had the curiosity for science. And I think 
one of my friends who had been in science for very, very long told me that what makes a good scientist is curiosity, not necessarily like knowing techniques or whatever, because you can't teach curiosity, but you could teach techniques. And right. that's really stuck with me and given me the confidence, I think, to keep on, even though sometimes I really don't, I feel like I've been, been behind and can never catch up. I love that. No, that's great advice. I think that's awesome. Curiosity. And yeah, that's where, I guess that's where it stems from. I mean, you have to have a research inquiry, right? Like, mm -hmm. what are we, <laughs> what are we curious about? 100%. No, that's great. So the next question was about the somatic sensation of these naked mole rats. So soma cells, those are brain cells, correct? And you're looking at the sensation of them under different environments, or what exactly are you guys studying there? We're still trying to figure that out because <laughs> naked and why the naked not... mole rat? What's up with the <laughs> naked mole rat? Yeah, <laughs> so naked mole rats is something new that they've acquired this year. And originally, naked mole rats are used to study like aging or cancer research. But we are more interested in how they perceive pain or temperature or other things because it's widely believed that they don't feel pain or feel pain at lower thresholds, mm. but also they're super social animals. So something, a question that we're kind of exploring right now is how maybe being with other mole rats in the colony affects their perception of pain versus when they're alone. And we're mm. trying a bunch of different things because a lot of things don't work in research. And especially with naked mole rats where most experiments are designed for mice and then you try to adapt them to naked mole rats but they have like different structures like they have all these muscles up there in the brain so sometimes imaging or doing things can be really difficult or and we're still figuring things out interesting very cool well i'm excited to see what comes of that definitely keep me posted and um with respect to your involvement in this lab it was somebody at the neuroscience society that had recommended it to you so mm -hmm. talk to us about cns columbia neuroscience society how did you decide to join? When was that? Was that around that sophomore year time? Yeah, I joined the CNS my sophomore year. And I remember the reason why I was interested in joining was because during the info session, they I was really drawn to the way they focused on outreach and making, allowing you to sort of take it in the direction you wanted, which means that you could propose a project and people on the team will help you make it happen. Mm. And I really like being able to sort of propose my own project and do things. Um, this is just something I like doing and I'm a really big fan of outreach because I think it's really important to engage with the community and not see science just as sort of existing in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason why I joined and it's been such a great community. We always send out like newsletters with opportunities. We hold a research fair every year to help other undergraduates find research opportunities. And even within our own club, we have like mentorship initiatives where upperclassmen can mentor um, underclassmen to give them advice on how do you navigate the neuroscience major if you're pre-med or pre-PhD or just want to study neuroscience. And yeah, I'm thankful for all the opportunities that have come through it. Definitely. And so obviously they've given you great opportunities, but with respect to the clarity and direction it's provided on your academic path, how do you say it's most impacted you in that direction? I think the club itself allowed me to see science within an applicable context. Because sometimes when I'm doing research, I get sort of tunnel vision. I'm like, yes, I'm studying this very specific process, but how do I apply this elsewhere? Mm -hmm. And then when we hold like panels for, through the CNS, we get to talk with scientists who talk about their specific journeys or how they see science applied. I remember one of the very first panels that I hosted was called What Shapes the Science That Shapes Our Society? Because the leading question was, if science has historically been used to justify certain things, what does that mean for science and objectivity and, you know, like how we conduct science or how we think about science, like what shapes science, but also how does science shape our society? Right. And those are very important questions to me. And hearing all the speakers talk about it really put a lot of things in context for me. Um, and we also have partnerships with organizations like Black and Neuro, where we have mentorship for people who are underrepresented in neuroscience, talk about their journeys and provide sort of a mentorship space. And yeah, we also have like Saturday Science, which I'm as part of, <laughs> um, right. which, um, we do these events with Zuckerman to introduce neuroscience to little kids and right. seeing their joy and curiosity. Um, and sometimes they know so much is really inspiring to me and allows me to see like educational opportunities for neuroscience. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So as the external affairs chair, what is your responsibility then primarily? 
that one is more about me making flyers and sending them to the mail, uh, mailing lists and posting them places because graphic design is my passion. You know that meme? Graphic design is my passion. No, I don't know that meme. <laughs> okay. I need but, to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is my passion, graphic design. So, no, I'm kidding. It's not. Um, <laughs> but so it's more about outreach. It's more about promotion. It's about getting things sort of into the into the radar of of people that you're trying to target, like your members or people that you're working with, etc. Do you enjoy that role so far? Yeah, I definitely think it's really meaningful to me, and I don't know that I would have chosen any other role. And I've been this for two years, so. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Well, so moving away from CNS and more talking about what you hope to do after college, where do your sort of ideas lie? Like, what are you considering right now? Do you have an idea of what direction you want to head? Is it more school? Is it industry? Is it a particular field? What are you thinking? Um, I guess I'm really up in the air right now. I, I was at first interested in maybe going into public health for a few years because I really enjoy the public health studies that I've done here, but I'm not entirely sure what will work out, so I'm waiting to see, I guess. Um, and then beyond that, I think very, very big picture-wise, I found out during my time in college that working with people and having an impact on people that I can sort of see and like being involved with outreach, education, and sort of just really interacting with people on a very personal level is something that's meaningful to me. So I'm looking to opportunities to do that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Well, exciting to see what will come after this year. Um, and it sounds like you'll have plenty of opportunities at your disposal. So congratulations on all the hard work you've done. And uh, we're going to close this out now with a rapid fire round. So a couple of questions, whatever comes to mind first, just shoot back and, uh, and we'll be rolling right through it. So the first question is, what is the most stressful part of being a student day in and day out? I would say trying to figure out who you are between like what you want to be, what people want you to be, what people think you are, and who you used to be. I love that. Very insightful. What is the most meaningful way for students to help each other? Being there for each other. And I think some of the most meaningful experience I've had is when my friends just listened to me or were there for me even when exam time we were getting rough and I know that's something that I try to do for others as well. Definitely. What is your biggest hope to accomplish during your time on earth? I would say just to have a positive impact on those around me um, to pay it forward to everyone that's helped me. Definitely. And for those who are early in their educational journey what is your top piece of advice that you could give them? I would say take every opportunity that comes your way um, if you're interested in it. If you have even the slightest interest in something, go ahead and explore it. There's always time to drop it if you don't like it or go deeper into something. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, Fallon, it's been awesome speaking with you. I love hearing about your path and I love hearing about all the things that you've been able to do, all of the engagement that you've had in this space and the twists and turns that your path has taken to lead you to where you are now. So where can people follow you and learn more about what you're up to? Um, I'm not really like posting updates on my life actively, but I have a pretty uncommon name. So if you Google me, you could probably find <laughs> some things about what I've been doing, which I have mixed feelings about. But if that's what you want to do, I guess that's what happens. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm.